Okay, so we will work on uh, homework six. So here we have uh, a percentage, 20%. And in a particular term, we observe 24 out of 100, so, uh, and which is a proportion of 0 0.24. And we are trying to ask, or we're trying to check whether the proportion of A's has increased or not. And we are asked for a hypothesis testing. So H0 is that theta, or this proportion, equal to 0 0.2, whereas the theta is greater than 0 0.2. So we use alpha level equal to 0 0.05. And state the conclusion and the probability for beta uh, when the theta is equal to 0 0.3. So here we first uh, state the no alternative, that p is equal to 0.2 and p is greater than 0.2. And here we have uh, observed data, which is uh, 24 out of 100. And then we calculate the estimated standard error, which is the square root of p multiplied by q over n for the binomial distribution. And once we have both of them, we are able to calculate the test statistic which is p minus 0.2, where the 0.2 is come from the null hypothesis and then over the estimated standard error. And then this test statistic follow a normal distribution, a standard normal distribution. And then we use this p norm to calculate the p rally. And uh, we have 0 0.15, which is greater than 0 0.05, so we do not reject the null. So this should answer the first part. Uh, conduct the tests and state the conclusion. For the second part is that we're trying to find the probability beta when uh, the true or the uh, or under the under the distribution where or under the uh, or the true value for the p is equal to 0 0.3. So from there we first need to construct our uh, or to choose or to see where is our rejection region and based on a particular alpha, which is 0 0.05. So the definition for alpha is that we reject or that's p greater than c under the null hypothesis, where p is equal to 0 0.2. And uh, we apply the transformation that um, on both sides. So this p minus 0 0.2 over the standard error, we have a z statistic, a z score. And we apply the same thing on the right-hand side. So c minus 0 0.2 over the estimated standard error. And then under the normal, standard normal distribution, we are trying to find a quantile such that this part uh, will have a probability uh, 0.05. And from there, uh, from the quantile, then we are able to solve for the value C. And in this case, we have C equal to 0.26. So now based on the alpha level, we are able to, con to calculate the rejection region. And now back to the definition for the power and based on the c, uh, the value c that we calculate, and now we're trying to find the beta or the power. So we return to the definition for the power is that we have the same rejection criteria, but under the, the new um, um, uh, hypothesis where p is equal to 0.3. So under this, this alternative hypothesis, uh, and that is our definition for the power. And we apply the same transformation. So p minus uh, 0.3 over estimated standard error. We have a z score on the left-hand side. And then we apply the same transformation on the right-hand side. So minus, point C, minus point, point 0.3 and then over the estimated standard error. And uh, we know that this follow a standard normal distribution. We also have the z from, the, from this part. So the only unknown uh, is the beta, and then we are able to calculate that uh, using the p norm under the standard normal, and then we will have our beta values. Any question or comments? Okay, and then for question two. So we have uh, approximately normal with mean 12,000 and a standard deviation of 2,000. So 
we also have a random sample of 30, and we observe a 12,500 for this particular day. And we are asked to show that if, it, uh, if we have evidence that a second, there's an improvement under this new management. So state the no and alternative, p-value, and the conclusion. Yeah, so we first state the no and alternative, where the mean is equal to 12,000 and the mu is greater than 12,000. And then we just calculate the Z statistic, which is the observed value minus the no, which is 12,000. <coughs> and then over the estimated standard error for the mean. Uh, in this case, it will be the standard error over the square root of uh, n. And then we can calculate the Z statistic. And then under the standard normal distribution, we have the p-value. Since it's greater than 0 0.05, so we do not reject the null. Similar to what we did in before the first meeting. Any question or comments? Okay, question three. So random variable x and two distribution. Find the most powerful test at alpha 0.1 and report the power of the test. So yeah, here we first calculate the ratio for each of the data point. So for x1, we have the density of the alternative over the density of the null hypothesis, so 0 0.1 over 0 0.2. And then for the second observation, x2, we have this as 0 0.4 over 0 0.3. So the density under the alternative hypothesis over the density of the null hypothesis. And we calculate the ratio for all data points. And we have uh, five of them, so we calculate the ratio. And then we rank the ratio in a, in, uh, in a decreasing order. So for example, this ratio is equal to three which is the largest of all five values. So we give, uh, we assign a rank one. And then for the second one is this uh, four over three. So for the second data point, which is the second largest in this, da uh, in this five values. So we assign a rank two. And then a rank three, rank four, and rank five based on their magnitude in a decreasing order. So once we have the rejection priority, then we are able to calculate the, uh, uh, or to start to reject the data point. So we are asked to find the most powerful test at alpha equal to 0.1. So when alpha equal to 0.1, we can see that we want to reject the null when the ratio is equal to 0.3 over 0.1. In other words, uh, we are trying to reject only one of the data point, which is uh, uh, based on the order. We first reject the first one. And then under the null hypothesis for x5, we can see that it is equal to 0.1. We have a 0.1 probability. So we can see that when we, um, as, uh, up to rejecting this uh, x5 for the first, uh, in the first order, we are able to achieve that this alpha is equal to 0.1. So uh, this will, so rejecting one x5 is able uh, to satisfy this condition. So uh, we are able to achieve this alpha equal to 0.1. Uh, does it make, or, yeah, so our target is that we're trying to get this 0.1. And then we see that uh, based on this order, when we reject the first um, x5, we are able to achieve this 0.1. So that our rejection region is that we, are going, we only need to reject up to the first data point x5, we are able to get this 0.1. So our rejection region is that. Uh, and after that, we are going to calculate the power. The power is that 
we have the same rejection criteria, but under the, no, uh, the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to reject the same x5, but the power should be uh, the probability under the alternative hypothesis. So it should be 0.3. So in this case, the power should be 0.3. So the key here is just to identify which, uh, up to which data point do we need to achieve this um, alpha 2.1. In this case, we just, need, we just need one data point, and then we are able to achieve this 0.1. So in contrast, in part B, we are asked for uh, when alpha equal to 0.4. And then when we reject one of the x5, we are only able to get up to 0.1. So that means we also need to reject some more point to achieve uh, the 0.4. And in this case, we can see that, uh, and then based on the order, when we reject the first one, we have a 0.1. And when we reject a second one, uh, based on this order, which is x2, and then under the no hypothesis, we have um, 0.3. So when we reject two of them, we are able to achieve a 0.4 in total for the alpha. So in this case, uh, we will, our rejection criteria will have to be rejecting both x5 and x2. And with that, uh, and then we can calculate the power is that under the same rejection criteria and that under the alternative hypothesis. So rejecting x5 for alternative is that 0.3. And then reject x2 for under the alternative is 0.1. So we have this uh, point, uh, 0.4, yeah. And then sum them together is 0.3. And this will be the power. And uh, beta is just one minus the power, or yeah, and then you get 0.3. But uh, the basic idea is that based on the alpha level that the question asks for, um, we need to identify based on this rank, uh, what are the data points that we need until we are able to achieve the, uh, the alpha that the question is asking for. And then from there, we are able to calculate uh, we're able to choose a data point and then furthermore to use the definition of power to calculate that. Question or comments? Okay, uh, for question four. So x1 to xn for a double exponential distribution, which has a density formulation like this, range from the support is negative to positive infinity with a parameter greater than zero. Consider the simple versus simple hypothesis testing. So the now is that um, lambda equal to lambda zero and against the alternatives lambda equal to lambda one, where lambda zero is less than lambda one. Derive a likelihood ratio test, and is the test uniformly most powerful against one-sided alternative? So we first calculate the likelihood ratio. So on the numerator, we have the joint likelihood. Uh, under the alternative hypothesis. So we have n data point, and then we just use the density function multiply, raised to the power of n. And then for the denominator, we also have the density for that lambda zero raised to the power of uh, n. And then we take the ratio, and then we can simplify into this form. And then we take the log. So uh, n multiplied by log of the ratio and then um, plus this part. And since that lambda one is greater than lambda zero, uh, yeah. So, and this is a constant term and this will be a negative value. So we will have our log of lambda simplified to negative summation, the absolute value of xi. And then our rejection region is that this part is greater than some uh, threshold C.
So the question is, derive this test, and if this test is, yeah. So since lambda zero and lambda one are arbitrary, so, and the test is most powerful for any lambda one greater than lambda zero. So it is a uh, uniformly most powerful test for testing this and the one-sided um, alternative. Uh, what do you mean? I actually don't know much about this part, so I also don't know how to answer your question. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The test is the test. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, then for question five, so we have two density function with the support in zero, and zero to one. And our um, density in the non-hypothesis is that uh, f of x equal to one. And the density for uh, in the alternative hypothesis, with, uh, which is f of x equal to two x. So we are trying to test, um, or our now is that that this random variable x come from the node um, this uh, f of f of uh, zero, and our alternative is that this random variable follows a distribution for f of one, and with this significant level, uh, the question is asking for how large the power can be. Okay, so um, we first need to calculate the ratio of the two density. And uh, on the numerator, we have this density from the alternative hypothesis over the density in the null hypothesis. And then the density is just 2x over 1. And this is equal to 2x, which is the ratio. And then back to the definition for the significant level is that we reject something, some rejection criteria, and then under the null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is referring to that random variable x follow uh, f of 0. Uh, which is uh, f of x equal to 1. So the probability for, a for this uh, density is that we take the integral uh, from c to 1, where this 1 is come from the support for this density function here. And then great, some random variable greater than c is the integr integral from 0 to its uh, upper, upper bound. So that is uh, we take the integral from c to 1. And then under the null hypothesis, and this is the density function, which is equal to one. And then the integral is just equal to x, and then evaluate it from one to c, and then which is equal to one minus c. So one minus c is equal to alpha for this random variable x under the null hypothesis. And we know that this alpha is equal to 0.1. So one minus c equal to 0.1, and c is equal to 0.9. So again, based on the alpha, we decide what is our rejection criteria. And once we have our rejection criteria, or this threshold for C, we then return to the definition for the power. And then we are able to, to evaluate this probability here. So again, the definition for the power is that we have the same rejection criteria, but this time under the alternative hypothesis. So for random variable x greater than c, again, is that we evaluate the integral from c to its upper bound. From the last part, we know that c is equal to 0.9. So we, take, we evaluate integral from 0.9 to 1. But this time, we are under the alternative hypothesis. So this is regarding to f of 1. Uh, and then f of 1, in this case, is equal to 2x. 
And when we take the integral, which is just x squared, and then we evaluate it from 0 0.9 to 1. And, uh, and then this value here, this integral, or this probability here, is just 1 minus 0.9 squared, which is 0 0.19, which is the power. Any question or comments? Okay. For question six, so x1 to xn, random variable from exponential distribution, and uh, lambda greater than zero, derive a generalized likelihood ratio test for lambda equal to lambda not uh, zero and lambda not equal to lambda zero and by the following step. So we first find the ratio, the likelihood ratio t uh, statistic lambda. So to calculate that ratio, again, it's just the ratio of the joint likelihood. So we have the numerator is the is the product from i to n, and then uh, the density under the alternative hypothesis over the joint likelihood. So the product of the density under the, uh, the null hypothesis. And uh, the null is that the lambda is equal to zero. And for not equal to zero, we have a, based on our data, we have, uh, we first just denote this as uh, MLE, so lambda hat, and then we, uh, for, the, for, the, for the numerator, we just use the lambda hat and then plug into the formulation of the exponential distribution. And then we simplify this ratio, we have uh, this form. And this is just the ratio, the likelihood ratio statistic. So once we are able to construct the formulation for that, uh, the second part is that find um, two multiply by the log of lambda and state how to reject the null. So, yeah, by taking the log of this ratio here and multiply by two, uh, we have uh, this one here. This is just taking the log and simplified, and then we have that. And this part is, um, oh, uh, yeah. So I think the question is just asking uh, how to, uh, just to state how to reject. So. For that, we just need to, uh, in terms of how, we just reject the null if that this two multiplied by the log of the ratio is greater than a quantile for a chi-square uh, for one minus alpha, and then with degree of freedom one. Yeah. So uh, yeah, since we are asked just to state how to reject, so we just reject the null when this is greater than a quantile with degree of freedom equal to one. And then for question seven, so instead of using the large sample approximation, yeah, so by that, it means that we are approximating this two of uh, log lambda follow a chi-square distribution. So uh, that is what we approximating the distribution for this test statistic. And then in question seven, we will have some more careful um, um, derivation. And we will then see what will be the exact distribution for this uh, ratio term here. So in up to question seven, uh, six, we have this two lambda ratio uh, follow a chi-square. So that's why we can use this kind of a, uh, criteria to reject this ratio or to, to conduct analysis. And then for question seven, we will uh, uh, um, derive uh, in detail what, are, what, what is actually the distribution that we are working on. So instead of using the large sample approximation, and uh, well, yeah, here, it, uh, yeah, it also said just derive the ex exact distribution. So show that the rejection region takes the form in this one. 
So now we are going to simplify the ratio that we get from part six. So we take the ratio of the two joint likelihood resulting in this and Oh yeah, here I just make another copy, which is, this is what you get from 6a. And then when we replace that, the lambda equal to one over uh, x bar. So um, this is the MLE for the uh, for your uh, exponential distribution. Uh, I think uh, you also already find this in, in some previous homework in finding the MLE. So here I just directly use this as, uh, as, uh, as a given. So once we have that, the MLE of an exponential distribution is equal to one over lambda bar, uh, x bar. Uh, and then here, uh, I'm going to rewrite the log of the lambda by uh, plugging this uh, as the given information. So lambda hat is one over x bar. So n multiplied by one minus n multiplied by log of x bar. So this is just this part by plugging x um, lambda hat as one over x bar. So log of one minus log of x bar. And then minus this part, stay the same, which is also a known, uh, uh, just a constant. And then uh, lambda zero minus one over x bar in, to in replace this lambda hat. And then summation xi is just n multiplied by x bar uh, because x bar is just summation xi over n. And further simplify this. So this becomes a zero. Uh, negative n multiplied by log x bar minus a constant. And then plus n x bar lambda zero and then uh, one copy of n. And we divide it by n on both sides. So one over this log of ratio is equal to negative log of x bar minus a constant, and then minus the plus that, and minus one. So when we remove the constant, which is this and the minus one, we are left with a positive lambda zero x bar minus a log of x bar. And then we can see that uh, our rejection region takes the form of these two terms greater than C. And this is what the question is asking for, or we are trying to show that our rejection region actually takes the form uh, in this. So by simplifying the log, um, the, ratio, the log of the ratio, the likelihood ratio, and then uh, with some, uh, or just plug in the number, uh, cancel the constant we can calculate the form of the rejection region. Okay, so that is the first step. Recognize the form of the rejection region. For the second part is that we plot the function of this rejection region. Uh, can you find where the minimum is located? Okay. So again, starting from the ratio or one over n, multiplied by the log of ratio. We have this and we replace, or we set this, uh, the part in the parentheses equal to t, just to simplify, uh, to ease the computation. So lambda zero multiplied by x bar is equal to t. So we, we have this function and we rewrite this function uh, or just temporarily call it g of t. So l negative log t plus t minus one. To find the minimum, we can take the partial derivative, or, or just take the derivative with respect to t. So we have uh, negative one over t plus one equal to zero. We found that t equal to one, or that this lambda zero x bar equal to one. And that is the quantity or the value that can let this function or this quantity to achieve its uh, minimum. And uh, here we also make a plot so this is the graph for uh, g of t, or the original um, one over n log uh, ratio. We can find that the minimum is achieved at t equal to one, or that um, the lambda zero x bar equal to one. So, yeah. Okay.
Okay, so that is what the question is asking for, to locate the minimum. And once we locate the minimum for part C, use the plot to show that the rejection region is actually composed of two regions. So X bar greater than C1, X bar less than C2, with some uh, cutoff value. Yeah, so in this case, uh, you can randomly just choose any line that can cut through this uh, ratio. And then here I just highlighted the two regions. So as you can see that there are just two regions for the rejection criteria. One is that this value less than some threshold and this value greater than some threshold. So we have uh, two regions. Then we just draw a line and then when we cut this log likelihood ratio, we will have two regions. And uh, yeah, so we show that the region is actually composed of two uh, additional regions. And then the last step is that uh, show that the two rejection take the form that sum of xi greater than c1 and sum of xi less than c2. And please tell the name of the distribution of summation xi. Yeah, so from, um, yeah, so yeah, here we are, we have two different particular, uh, two particular value on T that we can, uh, um, uh, as a threshold. So we have this lambda X bar greater than particular value and lambda X bar less than per some, some other threshold, C1 and C2. And then back to, yeah, for, and then for part D. So this is the two value corresponding to T, where T is just the lambda multiplied by X bar. And then now we can rearrange the term. So X bar is just some sum over Xi over N. So uh, we multiply by N on, the, on both sides and then we move this lambda zero on the, to the right-hand side. So we have the sum of xi is greater than this value, which is, uh, which is this part. And then we also take the same transformation. X bar is just sum of xi over n. So we move the n on the right-hand side and then the lambda zero to the right-hand side. So we have the summation less than this threshold. And that will be the two uh, criteria based on the data point. And the question also asks, name the distribution for the sum of xi. So xi is coming from a exponential distribution. And the sum of xi is follow a gamma distribution, which is also uh, um, uh, something that we have done earlier in the homework. Uh, that we show that the exponential distribution is a gamma distribution. Yeah, so altogether with questions six and seven, we are basically trying to reject the same thing. But here we have this two of log ratio uh, follow a, follow a uh, chi-square distribution. And here we have a more detailed um, study or derivation we can see that it actually have two components, two regions, and then, uh, and then the actual uh, distribution is a gamma distribution. So uh, by following the steps here, uh, we have this distribution is actually a gamma distribution. And that is what uh, question six and question seven is trying to uh, show or, or Any question or comments? Okay. Question eight. Um, compare the performance of two samples. So one is that whether there's difference in mean or, or not. And the part B is whether there's difference in the variance or not. 
So for part eight, we have this the difference in mean is equal to zero and difference in mean is not equal to zero. And here we also have two, um, um, two options. So one is that we assume equal variance. Uh, with that, we have our estimated standard error have, uh, uh, we will use these two formulas here, which is the pool variance multiplied by the square root of one over n plus one over m. And then the pool variance is equal to this one. And uh, yeah, so basically you just need to plug in the formula, calculate the value, and then uh, construct the uh, estimated standard error. And uh, yeah, once we have the estimated standard error, we can just use the mean of x minus the mean of y minus the zero, where this zero is come from the null hypothesis. And then over the, over the standard estimated standard error, that will give us a t, uh, t statistic. Uh, because here we just uh, a few data points, so we consider as a relatively small data data set, and we and then we have this test statistic follow a t distribution, and then we use the p uh, the the, um, the, the t distribution to calculate the p value, and also it's a two sided test, so don't forget to multiply by two, and then degree of freedom is just m plus n minus two p-value 0.13, and we do not reject the null. So this is one of the options. Uh, under the equal variance assumption, uh, we also have the unequal variance assumption, as uh, the qu first of all, the question did not specify. And also for part B is that we are trying to, to, to test whether the variance are different or not. So uh, we have to do two options here. And uh, because up to this point, we still don't know whether they're equal or not. And for the unequal variance assumption, we also, uh, well, it's just applying the formula, calculate the estimated standard error. Uh, and then uh, the degree of freedom has um, a more complicated um, uh, formula here. Calculate the estimate standard error and then degree of freedom, and then again, calculate the test statistic. And again, the test statistic follow a t-distribution. Uh, mean of x minus mean of y minus zero uh, over the estimated standard error for this uh, unequal variance assumption, p-value 0.13. So as we can see that under both uh, uh, assumption, we all have the same conclusion that we do not reject the null. Yeah, so yeah, basically uh, plug in the formula, calculate the ratio, calculate the, the p-value. And uh, we have two options here. And then for part B, uh, we are asked to check whether there's difference in the variance or not. Yeah, so again, this, uh, now it just follow um, uh, F distribution. So our test statistic directly is just this, and then follow uh, under F distribution. And uh, we also have a two-sided, uh, alternative, and this is equal to 0.34. So again, we do not reject the null. So if we do not reject the null, that means there's no difference in the variance. So maybe we should more focus on the equal variance assumption. But when we do A, we don't know, uh, we don't have this information. But um, yeah, so this is the part, maybe it, it will be, uh, it can help you to decide it which one, which formula you want to use, if you do this first and uh, this one after. Yeah, but uh, the bottom line is that you just need to plug in the formula and then uh, calculate the test statistic, perform or calculate p-value. Uh, also similar to what we did uh, in some previous homework. Any question or comments? Okay, for question nine. Um, this part, I, I actually forget about the rank sum, but 
Uh, and also, I just look up the lecture slides. It seems um, there's a different version for, for the rank sum. So uh, <laughs> I forget which part did I get from, uh, did I get this? Uh, probably from the textbook. And the, pr the lecture side uh, probably have a different way to calculate that. So um, uh, I think maybe it would be better uh, to just to check the lecture slides and then apply, uh, follow, uh, follow the template from there and then to, calc uh, to, to conduct this test. And uh, yeah, and then for question nine. Yeah, and then, uh, but either, either way, uh, you should probably have the same conclusion. There's no difference between the two types. So, or, or, or we do not reject that there's difference. And uh, this is just another type of test you can do. And this also align our conclusion from uh, question, question eight. Yeah, so we do not reject the no. And also using the rank sum, we also do not reject the no. But uh, I just forget um, the, the reasoning or the, or the reason for, uh, for, for doing this. And also it seems like the lecture slides have a different procedure or a template. So maybe just follow the, 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 the lecture slide. Uh, for, for, for how to calculate this. Uh, I, I have a different version for the rank sum test uh, from, the, from the lecture slide this time. Yeah. But, uh, but either way, you should have the same conclusion as your question eight. Since, uh, yeah. So question eight and nine, it just conduct two different tests on the same data set. So you should approximately have the same conclusion. But uh, yeah, just to make sure to follow the, uh, if the lecture slides are different, maybe follow the template from the lecture. Uh, okay, and then for question 10. So now we're trying to conduct a test for, to compare the difference between three types. So here we have uh, three types and then uh, their, their, uh, their sample size are also different. So our null hypothesis is that there's no difference among the types. And our alternative is that there is difference among the type. So this alternative here is not saying that, well, it's just as long as there's one of the comparisons, say type A versus type B and type A versus type C and type B versus type C. So as long as there's one of them are not different, then we should reject the no. So that is uh, what the alternative is saying, at least, or at least there's one uh, difference among the type. And with that, with the now and alternative stated, then uh, we now conduct the, uh, what this is called the ANOVA, or uh, to construct the ANOVA table, and then uh, to decide whether we reject or not, which is uh, this one. There's no difference among the type. So here I also provide two options. One is that uh, you can uh, just input the data and then in R you can call it uh, just ANOVA and then LM. This would directly give you a ANOVA table. Uh, and this is just a built-in function. Uh, but if you are um, interested in what, what is really actually happening in this built-in function, here I also write it uh, manually to calculate everything by hand. And um, this is what uh, the result I get. And uh, the result is the same as the R built-in function. So sum of square and then the mean square error and the F, uh, F statistic and also the test, uh, the p-value. Yeah, so here are just two options. One is that you can directly call ANOVA and the other way is that if you're interested in the logic, you can implement everything by hand or from scratch, and then you can calculate this. Uh, and then as you can see that both of them show the same result. And uh, based on the output, uh, this p-value here is greater than 0.05. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. So uh, there's no difference among the types. Yeah, so that should conclude our uh, homework six.